Donna Porter, lovely to have you Thank there. Thank you. So you have a busy day planned. You're going to be uh, later on. You're going to be uh, taking part in the the Dublin Writers Festival. I am. Yeah, I'm going to be interviewed by Roisin. Yeah, Roisin Ingle. Ingle um, is well known here in Dublin. I haven't met her yet, but um, yeah, very much looking forward to that. We're going to be chatting all about the book. Okay, and good. All sorts of things. Let's talk about the book um, because it, this is not necessarily your childhood or your teenage years. But it's heavily inspired as well. Very much so. Yeah, it's it's set in the 90s and the school is obviously based on the school that I went to and it's very much inspired by my teenage years. But yeah, it's it's not I, I it's it's not true. <laughs> I have to keep telling my dad. Um but yeah, it's not it's um it's just it was it was me kind of looking back at how it was but then I think the girls in the book are a lot probably a bit more innocent than I was. Oh really they're more innocent than you <laughs> yeah. actually were. I, I think so, in some ways, yeah. <laughs> um like when did you decide to write because obviously you know we'd know you from you know presenting documentaries being on tv and obviously now this is your first book but you had been been writing before but when did you actually make the decision that you wanted to write this one well this was about two years ago and chris was going to do uh some filming in montreal and it was a three-week production and i was going to go and i didn't really have anything to do while i was there so i thought right i'm going to start writing a pr- proposal for a novel and the novel was going to be about two women in their 30s who um b- had bad relationships with their mothers and who had bad relationships with other women and who kind of find each other and everything works out and when i was just about to go and start writing this and the day before i went to montreal my editor called me out of the blue and said hey my name's emily and would you like to write young adult fiction and i never thought about writing for the for younger people before mm. um and so she said have you got any ideas and i thought well as it happens i'm just about to start writing this story about these two thirty something year old women and the same story works exactly the same if they're 15 years old so it just kind of developed into this slightly younger coming of age story instead of about two women in the 30s well it's interesting because we're the same age and i was doing something myself recently where i had to remember what it was like to be a teenager yeah. And I kind of forgot a lot until I really kind of started to tap into it and all these memories came flooding back. But imagine it was the same for you, obviously, on a much larger scale when you're doing a project like this in your writing about what it's really like being a teenager. I think the the overriding thing about being a teenager, I've got a diary from the year before so the from when the girls are 13 well so when I was 13 to 14 I've got that year of diary and this the book is the year after but it just kind of reminded me how um how teenagers think that kind of um everything you experience it's like you're experiencing it for the first time so if you meet a boy I love him. I'll marry him. <laughs> We're going to have babies, and every everyone else just needs to get out my way, type thing. And then so so determined because you never felt love before, so you didn't realise that people come and go by that point. You're the people in your life are your world. Um, five pages later, he's out the window. <laughs> There's someone else. But it was just the every every emotion was just so overblown and so dramatic and so um, just all encapsulating. And as an adult you take things on the chin a bit more because you've had a few life experiences under your belt mm. so you know that you know every relationship isn't probably the be all and end all well that doesn't make sense because when you get older they actually probably are the be all and end all but um every day as a teenager every relationship that you have every friendship that you have you're really learning about who you are and you know what life is going to be but you never believe that these people aren't going to be in your life forever mm. that's one thing and i was reading back through my diary i just didn't remember who half the people were and they were obviously so, so important. important to me. And yeah. I was just like, no, can't get a picture in my head of that guy that I was in love with. <laughs> and do you, like, just as a matter of interest, is this something that, you know, you have kept going? Like, would you have a diary to this day? No, I don't. But because I write all the time. And you tweet it, all the time. And I tweet all the time. That's and I diary. think Facebook is a bit like a diary. And also I was saying um, last night at dinner, uh, we were talking about diaries. And I've got a Gmail account. And if you, it, I've had it for four and a half, five years Mm. if you go back to the beginning of your email account it's just the most amazing diary because one thing about keeping diaries when you're a teenager and this is really disappointing this is our dinner conversation you only wrote about your feelings you didn't actually talk about what you did so you don't there's no kind of places that you went or stuff like that it's really just you at night time talking about how you feel and the good thing about email is it actually says where you did what you did where you went and actually is a bit of a look back through history as to what life was like so i think if i if i did ever keep a diary again i think it would be a lot more detailed about you know day-to-day activity because i kind of feel frustrated reading my teenage ones it's just me in my bedroom brain farting about who i fancy <laughs> it's quite boring 
Um, well, one of the biggest differences, obviously, to you know the fact when we were kids, when we were teenagers, and, and those who are teenagers now, is obviously things like Facebook and Twitter, and it's moved on so much, which is brilliant and very exciting. Mm, is it? But very scary. It is very. Mm. I, 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 well, I personally am delighted absolutely thrilled that it wasn't around when I was a teenager. I just, I mean, hats off to teenagers today. I can't imagine it. We had, you know, we had the threat of notes being passed about us in class. Yeah. But that was kind of as bad as it got. And I remember, you know, we, we thrashed our problems out at school because you had to communicate with people. Now there's just so much that can go on that you, you know, so much backstabbing and what people are writing about you on your Facebook page and if someone defriends you or doesn't text you or, oh, I just can't imagine. Yeah, because, I mean, you're really active, um, you know, online. I am. Like, like I, you know, I'm I mean, what is it? You're, you're cl- I mean, yeah, you must be addicted. I mean, you have nearly 38,000 tweets already at this stage. You're joking. Yes, you do. That's, Did you not even know this? That's a book. It is a book. How depressing. Imagine <laughs> I could have, if I'd have just been writing the book. Um, I know. I mean, oh, I do you have to limit your, like, Well, you know. I try to, but I never get very far. I spend most, I go to bed most nights feeling like I really overexposed myself and really embarrassed. <laughs> like last night, oh, the other day, I tweeted this picture of myself with this really ugly face mask on that I found in my bag and my nose poking through. Like, I look like Ricky Tomlinson. I look so ugly. For some reason, I had to share that with the world. And this, I woke up in the morning, I was just like, why? 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 It's okay not to tell everybody everything. Well, actually, on that, because I know that you know you have you started to post um, little videos of you on YouTube. But there's one I saw anyway of you in bed, uh, as you said yourself, you were suffering from man flu. Now, can I just say you still managed to sort of carry it off, which is kind of irritating. Oh, really? With man flu? Yeah, you, you did a little bit, which oh. I found very annoying. But. You know, like you, you were obviously comfortable letting everybody know that you aren't well and you're in bed. Yeah, well, I'm also like I, um, I don't care about like making little videos without having makeup on and looking pretty all the time. That kind of thing. I think sometimes it's quite fun to just post a this is this is me looking really rank and really horrible. It means that it's you know it's fun when you look nice. It's a surprise. It's good. I like this because it's it, it must be pretty liberating as well because a lot of us, you know, myself included love a bit of makeup but love makeup you know it is it's it's obviously good to kind of step out of your comfort zone as well but i also think like um i i try not to be too preened all the time like when so this right so photoshopping for example i've done photo shoots before and i've seen the pictures and they've completely photoshopped so my skin looks amazing and i've got really high cheekbones and and i just had to say to the photographer i'm really sorry but i can't accept that you have to take the photoshopping out because i don't want people looking at a picture of me in a magazine thinking oh my god she's so beautiful and then i walk in the room and they're like oh <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. i don't think they'd have that reaction but you, but Which you know you really do that i that's then that is impressive yeah i, I mean look, if you see a version of yourself that looks amazing but it didn't maybe not exactly what you actually are you would say undo all of that I had to do that quite recently and look you're you're very very few photo uh, photographers if they're putting something in a magazine won't photoshop something they just make sure it's tonally right and all that kind of stuff if someone changes the shape of my face or really takes away my wrinkles or sometimes they take off my moles right so that's too much what's that about so no I'm not into that okay Um, I just want to go back to the book again because you know one of the characters in it went through I suppose something very similar to you growing up I mean your mum died of breast cancer when you were very young you were Mm -hmm. only seven Mm mm-hmm and the character in the book goes through a very similar thing. Yeah, it was, as a teenager, I really, I didn't really go there with that very often. I kind of, I was on a bit of a, just a mission to get through. Mm-hmm. And um, so what was it, what was really, I don't know what the word is, interesting, I guess, and cathartic from my point of view to write about, about a character who'd been through what I went through and just, I reminded myself how sad it was. So I can't, Chris got me walking into the bedroom one day just crying, just like, lost my mum it was so sad and I kind of you power on through life and you forget what you've actually been through and um so writing about Rene in the book experienced that sense of loss and that you know that fear and that real loneliness that she has and the fact that she doesn't feel like she fits in that's how I felt as a teenager but I don't know if I really admitted it right so to be able to fictionalize that was was a good thing for me I think and was it that you maybe necessarily hadn't dealt with it then and that it was more that you were kind of tackling it now later in life in some ways yeah in some ways I think um 
when you feel that you just need to keep going, I think a lot of people who have been bereaved probably feel like this, you just bury it a little bit and it does hit you like a brick like, later on in life. That definitely happened to me. And this was part of that process. It, it hit me like a brick when I made a program about it a few years ago and I underestimated how emotional that was gonna be. And then this was almost my kind of closure on all of that, just really delving into it and mm. going into it in detail and reminding myself that I went through something quite horrific. Yeah, I get the feeling from you, from seeing you on TV and following you on Twitter and things like that, that you just have a real lust for life and a sense of, you know what, like that and not kind of worrying too much about I do. how I look like or whatever, that it's kind of, you know what, I've won life, I'm going to live it. I do, however, you know, I am human and get really stressed out and very upset about things and I do take things quite personally, but I'm quite good... I'm quite good at shaking myself off afterwards, mm. but I do, I, you know, I get down and I cry and I'm quite, um, I'm quite sensitive sometimes. And um, probably a bit more sensitive the older I get. I used to be really tough and a bit like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to keep on going. And now I feel like I really, I think about things a lot more now. Is it because of working on the book, do you think? Maybe. I just think that I've just, I've calmed down a lot as a person. I think I was, I do, I do think my... Um, Inside my head, I was quite boisterous because I was just powering on, try achieve, 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 and you know, quite feisty. And I find that now I've just kind of chilled out. So I do get sad and stuff, but I'm quite, I'm quite good at just get, like having a bad night, and then it doesn't follow into the next morning. If mm. that makes any sense, I can brush myself off quite quickly. That's that's a pretty good way to live life. Um, when did you meet Chris for the first time? On my thirtieth birthday. Okay. So that was oh, no, on your actual night ago. of your birthday. Yeah, I did. We were, I was living in LA, and he introduced himself to me on Facebook, and I asked him to come to my party. Um, I didn't know who he was, by the way. I didn't. Uh, he's. I didn't know he was Roy from the IT crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and how did he like? You know make that move to be able to make contact with you through Facebook? Um, a mutual friend, a guy okay, called Nick okay. Frost, who he'd been oh, working yeah. with and I knew, said um, you should hook up with Dawn, she's in LA. And so um, Chris's Facebook page, is of an, uh, his photo is an old lady, <laughs> so I just kept getting this friend request from this old lady who kept asking me to go bowling. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, chill out, Granny, I don't want to go. Um, and so uh, eventually I was having a party, didn't think anyone would come, so I said, come along, bring all your friends. And he turned up at midnight, I was dancing with my dad. And um, and yeah, and then six months later he'd moved into my apartment, so it happened yeah, quite wow, quickly. Right. Was it boom straight away? There was it was for me, he took a bit of persuading. Did, <laughs> did you work on him? I did work on him, I didn't let him go, I really got my teeth in. How did you do that, by the way? Well, um... <laughs> I'm not really sure. I think, like, feelings towards each other were definitely mutual. I think he'd just come out of a very long relationship, and I just think he was—he thought he needed to be single, and I think I was over being single. So I just had to kind of sit pretty and wait for a bit. Okay, so it worked, obviously. It worked. Look, few months on my finger. Yeah, and congratulations. So Thank you're not you. even a mir year married yet, and no. there's loads going on, and he's working away doing his thing. You're working away in the book. Um, you're obviously writing more as well. Yeah, I'm doing the sequel. So it's the same girls a year later. Okay. Yeah. Can't wait to read it. Thank well, you. look, thank you so much for coming in to us. The very best luck today. You're going to be in Smock Alley Theatre, four o'clock with Roshan Ingle, our own Roshan Ingle, as part of the Dublin Writers' Festival. Best of luck with that and everything else going on. I could have chatted to you for a lot longer, actually. <laughs> but uh, thanks a million for coming in. The book is Paper Airplanes, Donna Porter. Thanks a million. Thank you.